Hi everyone. In this lecture, let's learn about the concept of Linux design principles and about Linux kernel modules. So in the previous lecture, I told you that Linux is a free open source monolithic kernel operating system. Uh, monolithic kernel means that the user space as well as the kernel space both will operate in the same address space. So Linux is a multi-user, multitasking operating system which is derived from the Unix operating system. So by multi-user, it means that uh, multiple users who are, who are there in other different computers or multiple terminals will be interacting with one single computer system which is having a single OS through the network. So Linux is an example for a multi-user, multitasking operating system. And um, its design principles are mostly based on the Unix design. If you see its file system, it follows traditional Unix semantics. And if you see its networking model, it is also implemented through the Unix. Uh, it also implements the standard Unix networking model. And the main design principles of Linux are, it follows three important design goals, namely speed, efficiency, and standardization. So in order to provide for standardization, it tries to adhere to the POS6 standard. So we all know that POS6 stands for Portable Operating System Interface. So in order to provide for standardization, at least two of the Linux distributions have already achieved the POS6 certification. So we know that in POS6 standards, there are a set of specifications which specifies uh, different aspects of operating system behavior. Okay, we have POS6 documents for common operating system functionality, as well as for, uh, uh, we have POS6 documents for process threads, we have POS6 documents for uh, various real-time operations. So all these standards are being followed by the Linux distributions. And uh, Linux operating system supports POS6 P threads as well as POS6 real-time process control. So all this is being done in order to ensure standardization in the Linux operating system. And if you see the components of the Linux system, which is, which is being shown on the screen, the components of the Linux system can be divided into three categories. At the bottom most level, we have the Linux kernel and the loadable kernel modules. And the middle layer consists of the system libraries. And above the layer of system libraries, we have the system utilities as well as the system management programs, as well as the user processes. So you can say that Linux system is composed of three main bodies of code, namely kernel, system libraries, and the system utilities. Let's see about each of them in detail. <coughs> the first one is the kernel. So this Linux kernel is responsible for maintaining all the important abstractions of the operating system. By abstraction, I mean it can be anything like it can be the virtual memory concept or it can be the process concept. Every abstraction of the operating system is maintained by the Linux kernel. And when the kernel code executes, it is said to execute in a particular type of mode called as the kernel mode, or it's also called as the privileged mode. <clears throat> so when kernel code operates in privileged mode, it, acts, it has full access to all the hardware components of the computer system. And apart from that, we already know that Linux kernel is a monolithic kernel, which means that the user space as well as the kernel space, both will reside in the same address space. And uh, whenever there is a switch from user space to the kernel space, it is implemented through the concept of system calls. So when we have the monolithic kernel, it means that all of the kernel code as well as all of the kernel data structures for implementing everything is going to be present in the same, <coughs> is going to be present in the same address space. For example, you may have the code for implementing the file system. You may have the code for implementing the device drivers. You may have the code for implementing networking or you may, have the, <clears throat> you may have the code for implementing virtual memory or scheduling. All such types of code are going to reside in the same single address space. That is the concept of a monolithic kernel. <clears throat> so the next layer is your system libraries. Just recall the diagram for the components of the Linux system. You can see that the system libraries is the middle layer, which is in between the system management programs or the user utility programs and the Linux kernel. So the system libraries provides a standard set of functions through which the application programs or the user processes can communicate with the Linux kernel. <coughs> okay. 
So one important function which is performed by the system libraries is it has a standard set of functions with which the applications can interact with the kernel. And so in case if you have any OS functionality which does not has to be executed in the kernel mode or the privileged mode, then much of that operating system support functionality will be performed through the system libraries only. Okay, so the system libraries are mainly used to perform individual specialized management tasks and main thing is they will be um, allowing applications to make kernel system service requests. That is whenever the application makes a request service request to the kernel, they will be implementing it with the help of the system calls. So whenever they implement it with the help of system calls, that system calls may not be in the proper, the arguments may not be in the proper format. So arranging of the system call arguments in the required format in the special form which is necessary to make the system call that will be done by the system libraries. So first important task done by the system libraries is arranging the system call arguments in the special form which is necessary to make the system call. Another important task which is performed by the system libraries is sometimes they provide more complex versions of the basic system calls. For example, one such example is the buffered file handling in C programming language. Buffered file handling means that we know that buffer is nothing but a special region of the physical memory, a special temporary region of the physical memory. So whenever file operations are done, the data might be stored temporarily in the buffer. And whenever the file is to be closed or when the buffer becomes full, the data in the buffer will be copied to the file. This is called buffered file handling and such types of complex uh, tasks will be done by the system libraries themselves. And the third thing is sometimes system libraries also perform some basic routines, some basic commonly used functions which may not be directly related to system calls. Some examples are your sorting algorithms. For example, in C library, in C system library, you have sorting functions uh, which can be, which is implemented not corresponding to system calls. You have many string manipulation functions in C library. So that is also implemented by the system libraries, but that do not correspond to system calls. <coughs> so uh, in short the system like utilities can be categorized into two different they can be categorized in a variety of ways one is system utilities which are involved only once and then another is system utilities which may run permanently so system utilities invoked only once means they may be invoked just once just to initialize and configure the system say for example you may have system utilities to initialize the network devices and to configure the network devices or system utilities to load the kernel modules and to unload the kernel modules, etc. Or you may also have in Unix, we traditionally call it as daemon processes. So we may also have some system utility functions which will be running permanently. For example, you may have system utilities which will be accepting network connections, uh, which will be accepting the network connection requests or you may have daemon processes which will be handling the login requests from terminals or you may have de daemon processes for updating the log files. All these functions will be performed by the system utilities. Or the other categorization is, so one categorization is system utilities can be classified as those which are initialized only once or those which run permanently. Another categorization is system utilities can also be classified as standard utilities and complex utilities. Standard utilities means system utilities which perform simple tasks like if you want to list the contents of a file or directory, or if you want to delete some file, or if you want to rename the file, if you want to display the contents of the file, all the simple tasks will be done by standard system utilities. You may also have complex system utilities for performing some complex text processing functions. For example, using the GREP command, we may perform some pattern searching on the text, or you, we may also sort textual data. So all such functions will come under will be performed by the complex system utilities. So that is all about the components of the Linux system. To summarize, we saw that complex of components of the Linux system is, can be categorized into three levels or layers. At the bottommost level, we have the kernel and the loadable kernel modules. The middle level, we have the system libraries. Or, and the third level, we have the system utilities. So that is all about the components of the Linux system. And that is all about the design principles of the Linux operating system.